Hi, uh, greetings, fellow Trekkies and Trekkers. <clears throat> well, I look at Star Trek Deep Space Nine Season 4, now continues on with Shattered Mirror. Jake Sisko is at his usual place on the second floor of the promenade when Oda walks by. Instinctively, he goes to leave as Oda often did when Nog was around with him, but Oda doesn't have a problem with just Jake there. Jake dismisses missing Nog that much, but Quark, standing nearby, says he does miss him a lot and furthermore complains about losing a waiter. Jake leaves to think somewhere else. <clears throat> when he arrives in his quarters, he is shocked to find his dad apparently sitting with his long-dead mother. Mom? Jake asks. Jennifer and Ben quickly explain to Jake that while the woman in front of him is Jennifer Sisko, she is not his mother, but rather her counterpart from the Mirror Universe. Jake quickly comes to grips with the situation, but we see how much she looks and sounds like his mother. Although he knows Jennifer is not his mother, he becomes very affectionate to her. Benjamin is then called to duty, as a Bajoran minister at Gedor is anxious to see him. He is forced to leave the two alone. <clears throat> when he returns, he discovers that Jake and Mirror Jennifer have left the station, leaving behind a multidimensional transporter device laid down on Sisko's dinner table. Sisko tries to follow this trail, accompanied by Major Akira and Chief O'Brien, only to discover the device was programmed to transport only him to the Mirror Universe alone. He finds himself on Terra Kanor, which the Terran Rebellion had captured from the Klingon Cardassian Alliance, and sees Smiley, who says Jake is with the Professor, but he's not willing to let Sisko go. Some regards make the point stick, dry their weapons at Sisko and confiscating his phaser. In the office, Smiley explains that they built, they built a copy of the USS Divine based on the data and schematics that Smiley downloaded from Deep Space Nine's computers. Like the original, this copy has structural problems, and the Rebels need Sisko's help to prepare for an upcoming battle with the Alliance. Smiley is willing to transport the Sisko's back to the universe before the battle begins, but only after the modifications are complete. Benjamin admits the structural integrity field grids need over needed overhauling in a two-week process. The Alliance, however, is expected only four days, likely not enough time. Smiley promises him that, if he doesn't help, he'll either die in the firefight or serve the Alliance with Jake. Then, Jill and Bashir enters demanding to know whether Sisko will help them. Smiley says he will, and Bashir immediately punches his and Bashir immediately punches him, a payback for Sisko's punch earlier. Sisko goes to Quark's divine Jake and Jennifer talking to Nog, mentioning they were friends. Nog can't believe it, but invites him to spend time with one of the women there. Sisko yells for Jake, and Jake admits he wanted to spend time with his mother. Sisko tells him Jennifer is nothing like her, but Jake is unfazed. He schools Jennifer privately for what he did, but Jennifer has the same attitude that Smiley has. They are desperate to fight the Alliance. He agrees to help, but orders her to stay away from Jake, but she says she's unable, as Jake wants to spend all his time wants to spend all his time with her. Meanwhile, the leader of the Alliance ship, commanded by Regent Worf, is on its way. He has Elim Garrick brought to him and blames him for the loss of Tarek Noor. Garrick tries to explain he's not alone in the blame, but Worf is infuriated that he's the only one to escape and playing cowardice. He says he cut his losses while the intended Kieran Rees pleaded for her life. Worf commits to dealing with the rebels himself, promising Garrick he'll be forced to fight as well. Garrick forces his enthusiasm, but he's chained and Worf won't release him until the rebels are killed. Sisko's on the bridge of the Defiant, working on various parts and coordinating with Smiley. Jesse attacks after he and Sisko's back, barges and slaps him for being intimate with her the year earlier in order to keep his ruse and pulls a knife to his throat. He quickly agrees to never try that again when they hear a scream from, the ins from inside the station. The intended is being tortured by Bashir for trying to escape her interrogation. <clears throat> Sisko objects to Bashir continuing to hurt her out of malice, saying just because the Alliance was brutal doesn't mean he needs to be. Bashir orders her taken away, but not before she comments on how fooled she was by Sisko earlier. Red has reached the Alliance of Red has reached the Alliance ships of the Defiant. Worf was told about the ship, and is angered at the increased effort it will mean for him. Garrick is just increasing their speed, but Worf rebukes him, still blaming him for the situation. After a long day on the Defiant, Yaris is quick to find Jennifer with Jake having dinner. Sisko says they need to leave in order to get to sleep, and Jake goes up and Jake goes to clean up after dinner. A woman Jennifer, she tries to massage him and remind him she's not the enemy. She says he's done well with Jake, and admits she's enjoying her time with him, the son she will never have. Just then, Smiley enters to inform them the Alliance fleet is now only eight hours away. Dex says they need to stall for time. 
Sheriff says he can get extra time with your raiders, but Cisco is suspicious. He goes to the intent to get information on witnesses in Elaine's fleet. She laughs, but Cisco convinces her that Garrick has probably ran to the regent, and arguing she was at fault for losing Tarek Nor and probably in danger now. After an unsuccessful attempt to get the force field lowered, she admits the ship's weak targeting sensors can be pulled with warp shadows. Meanwhile, Garrick is being punished by Worf for taking the key to his chains, insisting he didn't take it. He points out he's still trapped on the ship, and it will not do him any good. Worf loses his patience and stabs him with his... the tog, just as the guards find the key in his boot. Worf takes his knife back and tells the guard to make sure he lives. As the guard leaves with Garrick, Worf is informed with six rebel raiders approaching. They don't detect that they are actually, actually false signals, and the birds of prey go after them, but their destructive blasts are diverted. Jennifer finds Sisko working in junction of Jeffrey's ship with the Defiant and offers help, since she has smaller hands. During, she tells him she told Jake the reality of her intentions and what the rebels are trying to do. Furthermore, Jake said it doesn't matter, since she reminds him too much like his mother. When she, she never had someone, when she, she never had someone care about her like that, she offers to send Jake back to Deep Space Nine now, and the both she and Smiley trust Sisko to finish what he's doing. Sisko says to go ahead. Before she leaves, she supposes that the connection they had initially between them is now lost because of what she's done. However, Sisko supposes it's never real to begin with. A little stunned, she leaves. Jake, at his usual spot, but in the mirror universe, has his thinking interrupted by Nog. He insists his thinking is disrupting him, or perhaps his loitering, and that he should leave. In the midst of the reversal rolls, he laughs, but Nog is unamused. Jennifer arrives to get Jake. Soon, the birds of prey arrive and fire on the station. On the Defiant Bridge, Smiley says Sisko can go and take command, but not before wishing some on the job training. Sisko considers it, and said takes command himself. Smiley, very surprised, follows his commands. Nog suicides to free Kira as a thank you for her actions, for their actions to killing Quark and Rom, allowing him to inherit the bar. She takes his phaser and they leave for a ship Nog has repaired. She plans to head, head for Bajor, so Nog leaves her to it, going down a different corridor. He calls him go for a second, but rethinks it instead kills him. Before Kira makes it to the airlock, she intercepts Jennifer and Jake. Sisko leads the Defiant, teaches him a few maneuvers in the process, which victories against a few of the birds of prey. Meanwhile, Kira says she plans to take Jennifer as a present to the Regent. Jennifer insists Jake be left on the station, which makes Kira interested. She fakes agreement to leave. She fakes agreement to leave him and tries to shoot instead, only for Jennifer to jump in front of the blast. She wants to kill both of them when she asks who he is. When she realizes he is Cisco's son, she spares him to give a message that Cisco is now in her debt for sparing his son's life, and is a debt on which she intends to collect. The Defiant is now faced with the Regent's flagship. Sisko then resolves to pilot the Defiant himself, which Smiley gladly accepts. Piloting the vessel, you see him make a couple of passes very close to the ship, making it difficult to target him and at the same time inflicting major damage. The Regent is incest and can only demand the ship be destroyed. Another bird of prey arrives, but is attacked by the raider, which is returned to the station. Bashir and Dax briefly celebrate, but Sisko orders him to concentrate on the flagship's forward shield, which he has punched a hole in. Garrick successfully convinces Worf to flee, and the rest of the, the rest of the forces follow them. Worf is finally convinced that the intended is responsible for the loss, and Garrick becomes enthusiastic about killing her himself. Sisko turns to the battle to find Jake in the infirmary of Jennifer, who is clinging to life. For the last words, Jennifer tells Sisko that she knew they were still connected, to which he responds, always. Sisko and Jake share an emotional hug, and Sisko quietly suggests that his son to a sudden they return home to Deep Space Nine. Aww. So anyway, let's take a look at some continuity surrounding this episode. The Mirror, Uni the Mirror Universe version of Worf makes his first appearance in this episode. Michael Jordan was originally, was originally to appear as Worf in Crossover, but he was unable to do so because he was shooting the final season of Star Trek The Next Generation at the time. All of a sudden was given to Garrick, and the dialogue that had been intended for Garrick was used to create the character of Telok. Nog is the third Ferengi to die in the Mirror Universe. Quark was killed by Garrick and Crossover, and Rom was killed by the Attendant and Through the Looking Glass. This is the only, DS, this is the only episode in DS9's Mirror Universe arc where Garrick Lofton, 
Carol Glopton appears. This episode establishes that Jake was never born in the mirror universe. Dennis Madelon makes his third appearance as the Terra Marauder. We learn he is a widower. The weapon socket from which Kira gets the phasers is in the phasers in the teaser is a reuse of the prop from Hard Time, which was shot directly before this episode. You can recognize the number 47 on its label. For this episode's first terrestrial release in the UK, the scene in which Garrick is stabbed by Worf was slightly edited. This episode marks the last on-screen appearance of any incarnation of Jennifer Sisko and thereby actress Felicia M. Bell. Prior to the establishment of the history of the televised Mirror Universe, a mirror, univer a mirror version of Worf appeared in the novel Dark Mirror, depicting a mirror universe in which the Terran Empire had survived well in the 21st century, the Klingons being one of their many slave races. That version of Worf was a slave aboard the ISS Enterprise in 2367. One of the statues seen in the commander's office <coughs> of Orteric Nor was previously seen as Arctus Baron's statue in the Next Generation episode Gambit Part 2. James L. Conway later directed the Enterprise episode In a Mirror Darkly, another episode dealing with the Mirror Universe. Hmm. So far, I think this episode is actually pretty darn good, and yeah, I do love the Mirror Universe episodes. They are just so good, and we have two more to look at in later seasons, so yeah. Still, overall, I give Shattered Mirror four warp cores out of five. Anyway, anyway to new bed is waiting for the next episode, The Muse. So, until then, live long and prosper, everybody.